In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the parametric modeling feature within Fusion 360. So before we begin, if you are unfamiliar with what Fusion 360 is, it's a 3D modeling software. Ultimately, I use it a lot for planning out any of my woodworking projects and I design it on the computer. And then that way I can get a sense for what it looks like and then also grab all of the dimensions and build a cut list from it that I can bring down to the workshop so I can get started. So I use Fusion 360. I've also used SketchUp, which is another free software if you go on their website, and then Shaper 3D, which is an app on the iPad. Um, I do like Fusion 360 for the exact reason of this video, and that is the parametric modeling. And I will get into that in a second. So Fusion 360 is free. If you just go to Google and search for Fusion 360, you'll see a list you know, you'll see a, a couple results here, but if you click on the Fusion 360 for personal use and go to their website, you'll be able to see that this option is free. Click the button to get started, install it, and you're up and running. Let's jump over to Fusion 360. And this is ultimately what you'll see when you first open up the program. I'm not going to go into too much detail about all of the features along the top. In this example, I'm going to build a simple base or, you know, a couple pieces of plywood to construct a cabinet carcass or whatever the case may be to give you an understanding of what these, uh, what the parametric modeling does and how effective it is in Fusion 360. So... To start uh, with the program opened, I always go up to the top right hand, uh, left hand corner and click on create a sketch. What a sketch is, is ultimately creating a 2D drawing. And then once you're satisfied with that drawing, you can then extrude those pieces to create the 3D model. So I am going to start on this face. So I want a front view of the base that I'm building. So now that I got my sketch up, now what I'm going to do is create all of the parameters in the back end to define my dimensions. And this is really helpful because, for example, if you're up here on the computer and you're not down in your workshop and you're not exactly sure of the exact measurements something needs to be, you can get started designing and then you can go back after you figure out what those exact dimensions are, upload them and change them in the parameters section um, and then your whole design will adjust accordingly based upon what you've already established so why don't we jump into it i'm going to go up to the top here and click on modify and then i'm going to go down to where it says change parameters this little window opens and then this is where we can start entering in all of the dimensions for whatever we're building and for again like for as i mentioned this example it's going to be a very basic but I will show you one that I'm currently working on and the full capabilities that you can use this for. So I like to first start off by saying, how wide is this piece gonna be? What is the depth of it? How tall it is to get the overall dimensions in its entirety? So we're gonna start off by doing that. So for the name, I'm gonna do total height and you can choose between the, the units um, most applicable for you. I'm going to go with inches here. And then the expression is just going to be how many inches do I want this piece to be? Let's do 30 inches and then press OK. Next, we're going to do the same thing, but for the total width. And that's going to be 24 inches. And then same thing for the depth of the cabinet. And we'll keep this 24 inches as well. Cool. The other thing that is probably helpful to add in as a parameter is the thickness of the material that you're using. In this case, we'll use three quarter inch plywood. So I'll add a new dimension or a new parameter in here. We'll call this ply thickness and put that to 0.75 and press it. Okay. And now we have all of our parameters set. You can always go back change these add more as you go you don't need to have everything up front um, but we're good here so i'm going to go down here and click on ok so now we're still in the sketch we're creating a 2d drawing and then we're going to extrude it later to create the 3d model so i'm going to go up to the top and i'm going to choose the two point rectangle and for this i'm just going to start drawing any sort of rectangle square whatever uh, the dimensions that you land your cursor on doesn't matter because that's where we're going to add in the parameters that we just created 
So the one that's highlighted on the bottom, we're going to set this to the total width. Select that, press enter. Just press enter once. If you press enter twice, it just kind of locks it in and then you have to redo it again. It's a pain in the butt. So now that we've got that established, we're gonna hit the tab button and then it brings us over to the other dimension to set. And for this one, it's going to be the total height. Press enter. And now that we're all good, we can press enter again and it locks in the drawing. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So now you can see that this is the overall width and height of the cabinet that I'm creating here in Fusion 360. So now that we have this, I wanna actually make it so it looks like we're building it and how am I gonna cut the pieces of plywood to make this box? So I'm going to go down here to the bottom left corner and I'm going to open up and select the two point rectangle again. And I'm going to highlight in this bottom left hand corner so it locks in and then again start dragging out any sort of dimension. Now for the bottom dimension that we have to enter in first, um, this is going to be the width of the plywood piece that we're using. So for this one, I'm going to do ply thickness, press enter, hit tab to move to the other dimension. This one's going to be the total height. And we're good there. Press enter. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Plywood thickness, enter. Total height, enter. One thing to know is that when you're building out the sketch, you want to make sure that you're selecting the anchor point in a way that makes sense if you need to make any changes later on. So you can see that I built out the full width and height of my cabinet, and then I did the outer corners and then went in to make the plywood sides. So if you did it any other way, it might you know misconstrue things if you did it on the other side. Um, and some of the parameters, if you go back and change them, they might be all messed up. So just, just keep that in mind. All right, so the sides are good. Now let's add the top and the bottom. We're gonna go down here. Now I want the bottom piece to be referenced off of the inside of the plywood side piece. So this corner right here, drag out another rectangle. This bottom piece, this is where things get a little bit more complicated, but you have to add some sort of equation into it because if I do total height or total width here rather it's going to basically bring it out all the way past where the box is and that's because I'm basing or setting the anchor point to the inside piece of the side so that's not a problem all we need to do is add to our expression down here and do minus and then plywood thickness and then times two so ultimately, the bottom piece width is going to be the total width minus the two sides, which are the plywood thickness to get to that inside dimension. And now I'm going to hit tab, go over to the other one. And this one is simply going to be plywood thickness. Press enter. We're good there. Let's do the same thing for the top. Total width minus plywood thickness times two tab plywood thickness press enter all right so now we have the foundation of our box at this point we're going to create it into a 3d model so i'm going to go ahead over here and press finish sketch zoom out a little bit so you can see and now i want to extrude these pieces for the total depth so i'm going to click on the face of both sides holding shift to select both of them at the same time and then i'm going to press the e key or you can go up here and hit extrude and then whatever direction that arrow is pointing you can see it's either going to be plus or minus so in this case instead of just dragging it out to be that 24 inches we've already set that up in the parameters so that's going to be total depth press enter and then go over here press ok so now we have two bodies so you can see that as soon as you extrude pieces from the sketch, the sketch disappears. But if you go over here to the left hand side, where it says the sketches folder, drop it down, you'll see that sketch is right there, you can click on the I key and open it back up. And I'm going to do the same thing for the top and the bottom. The reason why I didn't do them all at the same time is because if you do it that way, it thinks that the entire parameter or perimeter of the box is going to be one solid piece, and it's going to create one body from it. 
which is not going to work if we need to take this apart and create a cut list from it later on. So I do them in stages where they don't basically touch each other. So you'll see in a second when I grab the top dot piece right here, and then I grab the bottom piece, holding shift, press E to extrude, total depth. Now you'll see over here on the right hand side, it says join. So because we're extruding these two pieces and they meet up with two other bodies, the side panels, it's saying, hey, should we just make this all one solid unit? And we don't want to do that. So we'll go over to operation and change that to new body and then press OK. So now you can see all of the bodies exist here. We have the sides and then we have the top and the bottom. And that's it. So now if you ever need to make an adjustment, and let's say we want to change this height to 32 inches and the width to 26, we can go back to modify, we can go to change parameters, open up the panel again, and then go to our expressions and we'll change the total height to 32. And you can see it move up two inches, and then the depth to 20 or the width to 26. And you can see it moved out. And to take it a bit extreme, we could do you know, 50 total height, 10 and total depth is 10. So really cool feature. Uh, once you get into uh, playing around with it for a while, you'll understand what you can do with these parameters. And it really helps to just designing any piece of furniture. So you don't have to go back and edit every single piece if you're off by, you know, three quarters of an inch or so. Really, really helpful tool. So let me show you one that I'm currently working on. Um, I'm building a mobile workshop cart for my planer to stand on. And I wanted to have some drawers in it as well. So here's the design that I made. So you can see it has four drawers on it. And behind those drawer faces are the actual drawers themselves. And everything in here has parameters. So I'm going to open up the modify and go to change parameters. And you can see everything that I've created so far. The real cool thing, and it took me a while to figure it out because I'm not an expert with this program, but I do, I have enough knowledge to get by, is that uh, I added in a parameter for the total number of drawers. So everything is kind of calculated in the back end. So for example, if I wanted to make this, uh, you know, 35 inches tall, it scales, all the drawer faces are changed, the width is all based in relative on the height. And I can change the total drawers to be, let's do six. And it adjusts it accordingly. And I will hide the drawer face too, just so you can see it does the same thing with the actual drawers themselves. So again, really good tool. If you found this video helpful, would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already. And uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Still love to learn a little bit more if you know um, more about Fusion 360 and have some helpful tips. Tips, tips. If you have some helpful tips, uh, I'm sure everyone else would appreciate it. So leave a comment down below and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.